Well, we are looking um, to design what we call a backstop uh, that will help us uh, with the normalization uh, of monetary policy process. This is uh, our main goal. Uh, it's not about the stance uh, of the monetary policy, that's very clear to everybody in the governing council, but we need uh, to cope with these risks of fragmentation. We uh, announced already uh, instruments to deal with that, and uh, actually, as the president said yesterday, uh, it will begin uh, already uh, Ju July 1st, the flexibility in the PEP purchases. But we uh, believe that we need to go uh, a little beyond, beyond that with this uh, so-called anti-fragmentation. Uh, tool and the main goal uh, will be to have a, a backstop that uh, is credible uh, and uh, uh, ideally not to be used uh, if uh, the credibility uh, of, of uh, what we uh, achieve uh, is uh, sufficient. I think there is a differing assessment uh, as to whether we are already seeing a risk of fragmentation or fragmentation as of now or whether this is just a precautionary measure. What's your assessment? Well, it is precautionary for sure. Uh, we announced the first step of, of, of this process already in December uh, when uh, we decided to hand the net purchases of PEP in March. We announced that we could uh, use this flexibility. Uh, and actually, uh, after uh, announcing that we will apply this flexibility, uh, there was a, a significant ease uh, in the market. We see risks of fragmentation. Uh, we talk uh, always of risk of fragmentation, not uh, of actual fragmentation uh, in, the, in the markets. But this is somehow endogenous, you know. Uh, it depends on uh, the, the, the policies we implement, the instruments we have. Uh, we will continue to monitor all the risks uh, that uh, monetary policy face uh, to, to mitigate them, to, to, to prevent them from not realizing that's, that's the, the point. So yeah. it's For a con constant monitoring of, of the risks. Portugal is one of the rare countries in the Eurozone which is already trying to cut its debt level. So um, are we going to see another round of, of austerity? I know that's the ugly word from the debt crisis, but well, is that what you plan? Well, we've been able to reduce debt already since 2016 uh, in a context that it's not described as austerity. Uh, 2020 was an exception for everyone, uh, but uh, in 2021 the process of reducing, reducing debt in Portugal uh, resumed quite substantially. Actually, it was the largest debt reduction uh, in a single year uh, in more than 20, 30 years. So it was a very strong reduction uh, in, in debt already in 2021, and we expect it to continue uh, 2022 and the following uh, years. So this is something that is a very important goal for economic policy uh, in Portugal. Uh, and. Well, it's, uh, it's a matter for the government, but I can say what is our evaluation uh, of it. Uh, it's, it has been quite successful and we really uh, b believe that it's going to, to continue. Reaching 100 percent uh, of debt over GDP ratio uh, in the next uh, three, four years will be very, very important for Portugal in terms of the risk perception that the country still has, uh, but much more reduced from previous years. Uh, Portugal also has a thriving um, real estate market. It's a big, yeah, big, big issue, I guess, also now with rates on the rise. So is there a potential, is, is there a risk to the economy stemming from that? Well, uh, the banking sector is somewhat, somewhat shielded from, from that process uh, because the share uh, of uh, uh, purchases that are made uh, through the banking sector is much lower today than it was before. Uh, also the markets, the, the, the demand uh, for real estate is uh, very broad. There's a component of uh, foreigners uh, buying homes in Portugal, uh, of course also uh, domestic demand. We, we don't, we, we are of course uh, concern with all the risks and we are again monitoring that. Uh, we don't see uh, a problem right now. The risks are there, we don't see a problem materializing and uh, 
the situation is very different from other bubbles of real estate that uh, we witnessed. Not, not in Portugal, because Portugal did not have one uh, in, in, the fin in the context of the financial crisis, but in other countries uh, in Europe. So that's, that's the, the way we take this. Yeah, um, let's also have a word on inflation because clearly <clears throat> we've seen Spanish inflation going into double digit. So how is the situation in Portugal and um, are there already signs of second round effects for wages? Well, we uh, were kind of late uh, to this wave of inflation uh, uh, because uh, it didn't pick up uh, until very recently. But the numbers for Portugal now are, are a matter of concern uh, as well. Although we don't see uh, second round effects. Uh, actually, the, way, the nominal wage increases in Portugal up to May, uh, the numbers we have, uh, are lower than in 2021. Uh, so we don't see that, uh, that, that forming in Portugal. And actually the labor market has been probably the, the greatest success uh, in our uh, economies. Uh, and it's actually one, one uh, resilience that we need to continue. And we, don't, we should not test uh, the resilience of the labor market through wage increases that are uh, not uh, warranted. Uh, we don't see them in Portugal as of now. We understand the pressure for further wage increases. This is a natural thing in, when facing inflation. But we need to uh, be rather conservative because of the risks, the very significant headwinds that we still face uh, in, our, in our economies. Coming from supply uh, bottlenecks, the war uh, in, in, in Ukraine, uh, also the pandemics, because the pandemics is still uh, putting some pressure uh, on, on, on us. So these are the, the issues that we should concentrate on to reduce uncertainty. Uh, and uh, as every forecast now uh, projects, uh, inflation to start going down uh, at yeah. some point in the near, in the near future. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.